Hey guys, what's up? Let's do a, I'm Brad U, let's do a recent pickups video. I've got a couple little stacks here. Got these on the same day the other day. This was from one guy, this was from another guy. Two of my favorites who have now become regulars. I guess I've become regulars for them. This guy I got in the mail today. And I'll dig in and show you. Oh, I didn't really. It's not really in order. Ah, uh, this is actually a pretty funny one, though. This is 64, 65, 66 tops baseball. <laughs> Every card in here has writing on it. Uh, most of them say either traded. Or, like, I think somebody didn't like the angels. A lot of the angels had this, like, black marks. Traded. I'll find a couple of them. I'll try and find anyway. A couple of them were actually kind of funny to me. Quit. <laughs> Probably retired. <laughs> quit. He quit. What a quitter. Um, to do. Also, I should have got this one ready because I feel like there's one card in here somewhere that I was actually going to show because I thought that was funny. Quit. A uh, couple checklists actually. Oh yeah, these are there's actually good cards in here. Uh, I mean, good is relative to the condition, right? Rocky Colavito. Yankees, another one. Maybe they didn't like the Yankees too because the Yankees seem to be blacked out. Not sure what that is. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, Orlando Cepeda, a couple cards. A Bob Uecker. Aparicio Lupinella, rookie. So some of these were pretty nifty. A Lupinella rookie, but man, it's got a big X over Brumley. It's also miscut. A Warren Spawn, quit. Quitter. Frank, a Don Sutton rookie, but his face was scratched off. And he had, the same guy had a different lot of these same things, but in nicer condition. But that one had uh, Sutton's face scratched out too, so probably got him in the same place. Eddie Matthews, you can see some smudging there and traded on the back. Frank, Frank Robinson, I don't think this one had writing. Yeah, but it's chewed up. And Roger Maris, literally chewed up. All four corners bit off. And writing. Whew. So those were kind of the better cards. What was the... Oh, I wish I had pulled that one out. Damn it. Now it might be hard to find. I feel like there was one card in here that, like... Uh, oh, I know what it was. It was... I gotta find it now. Son of a bitch. I'll have to look fast. Let's see. I think I would put him... Put, put it on top of a stack. So let's try this. Let's try doing it this way. See if I can find the first card in each set. I don't remember which one it was. And if I don't find it, I don't find it. Nope, not there. Zimmerman. Hmm. Uh, the reason I got these is I'm trying to do, as I get into vintage, I kind of thought it would be fun to like have a set starter of, of play, play cards. Oh, Sandy Alomar. Senior. Cards I can just play with and have fun. Ah, damn, it's lost in the shuffle. There's a dude in here somewhere. I'll find it for a future video because it's super worth it. It's one of the most hardcore unibrows I've ever seen. I don't know if I skipped over him because I feel like I would have put him in like the the, uh, the keepers pile with with these guys here. Um, so anyway, this these having a lot of cards from similar years, six, you know, sixty four, five, and six. I thought it would be a great way to start that, and with even because they're so beat up with the writing and stuff, there's even some stars in this lot. And, and semi stars, so it's not just the commons, which which is common. <laughs> it's common to start with the commons. 
Mm, I'm at the wrong stack, aren't I? Yep. Um, so like I have 70 and 71 or 69 and 70. I have quite a few of those cards, but it's pretty much was just all commons without even many semi stars. So this way I, I got a good like starting playset kind of, I guess I'd call it. Yeah, man. I already looked through all these, but I, I don't know that I was looking for that dude. That's a unibrow too, but that's not the one I was talking about. Nope, he's mixed in somewhere. Damn it. All this talk about a unibrow. Now I'm not even going to find it. Oh yeah, well, cliffhanger. Next video, look for it. Alright, so anyway, the other thing I did was yesterday. Yesterday, a couple days ago, I drove, took the drive to Vancouver. Had myself a little card day. I lined up three different meetings with three different card dealers. I guess they're all dealers in a way, yeah. Um, the first guy I met with, Doug, I bought from a couple times at the local shows. I probably showed you some cards that I got from him recently. And what I got from him was like, like eight or ten cards for my new 61 Fleer set. I've already put them into the binder, so I don't have those to show. But there was a card number one, the Ty Cobb checklist, and uh, Bob Feller were both in there. So two of the better cards that I needed um, were in there. So that was neat. And I had a nice sit-down chat with him for a good like half hour, just about collecting and stuff. And I'm actually real excited about one of the things he told me about. And I may get into that a little bit in this video, and I may wait till next video. Then, let's see, the next... I had already bought these cards. I just had to pick them up. And this is from John, who I've been... You know, posted some videos of lots. I'll do him last. Uh, that I bought from him recently. And this, these are from Mark, who actually I bought from him going way back two or three years now so you would have seen me if you've watched my older videos ripping into a bunch of packs that I've got from him this is the first time I really went through his singles and I just went and sat down like I said I dropped my daughter off so I, I had kind of time to kill and I told him what I was looking for was mostly stuff from 70s and prior any sport so he kind of got things organized and pulled things out and I went through them um, I grabbed basically he did he had a little stack of basketball. These are I think all commons, but I plan on probably building these sets So I just grabbed pretty much every common he had Tried not to get duplicates um, And he had all of he had quite a few in good shape and The price tags on them. I think were pretty much full Beckett. So like Dick Schofield I was like, I, I know that name. Yeah, I'm sure it's his dad, uh, Dick Schofield, that played in the 80s, 90s. It's obviously not the same dude, Jim Fergosi, who managed. So I knew that name, Louis Taint. This one's in real nice shape, Louis Tiant. Uh, I thought it was in real nice shape. But I will say, as I was going through, I was like, I'm seeing the price tags and I was a little scared off because I'm not really looking to pick through and pay, you know, full price for each common or semi star I'm looking at. But Mark's always been super cool and super fair to me. Um, so he's like, don't worry about the price tags. Just pull out what you want and I'll make you a good deal. Um, and even still, I was thinking his idea of a good deal <coughs> probably isn't going to come close to what I've been getting buying random lots right but I figured you know what like I, I trust him I'm gonna go for it Ooh, Bill Buckner rookie nice upgrade for me I think I've got it a nice Jerry Kuzman I got the Cruz Kuzman rookie on my last video or a couple weeks ago anyway a Brooks Robinson so like that this is a good example he's got 15 bucks on it it's got a massive crease here bunch of creases up here I mean this is a beat up card it's not worth 15 bucks um, it's arguably worth a couple bucks you know this I'm, I've been finding these in bargain bins stuff like that 
But I just pulled out a bunch of stuff. A Hoyt Wilhelm, nice. We had to black out his hat, I guess. Rusty Staub, another Tiant. I kind of was just grabbing, I was looking for minor stars when it came to baseball. Because like, going back to what I was just saying, I had a lot of commons and, and I had picked up a lot of the star star players, but I was kind of missing a lot of these kind of mid middle of the road guys. Like I don't think I have a Bill Mas Mazeroski card. Didn't really care that it was beat up. So I just kept, kept at it. Larry Hissel, rookie, rusty stab. Now it's the good stuff, right? And these I didn't I didn't know about. I was unsure on all of this, uh, but I figured I'd pull him out and, and talk to him and see what he says. Whitey Ford from 1961, my one of my favorite sets, probably my favorite vintage set. Oh crap! I think my daughter's up. Couldn't tell if I was hearing a baby or a cat. Uh, I might have to pause here. Yeah, let's just pause. I forgot I can do that. Pause. All right, took care of the baby. Only took a minute. I'm back. And Eddie Matthews. I think I only have one Eddie Matthews prior to this one. 62. Ooh, Roger Maris. Forgot about that one. Also 62, which means what I like about this card, it's got the 61 homers on it because he did that in 61, so. And see, that card by itself is marked 100, but it's pretty ragged. And then there's a Johnny Bench and a Pete Rose, couple Cincinnati Reds from 71 set. Um, so anyway, this whole stack, he charged me 64, and that was 60, $60, not $64, 64 this whole stack. That was more than fair, I think. Um, obviously like he's got he's obviously got the Maris at a hundred so he could have easily set up 60 on this card and that would have been reasonable I probably wouldn't have taken it but 60 for the whole stack hell yes so that was awesome like I said props to Mark he's, he's always been super good to me and then these were from uh, John I I kind of this, this is not the way I usually get things but I'm following his lead on how he's doing things, which is, I really like doing, you know, getting a big box for a couple hundred bucks or whatever and sorting through it and finding all these gems. But what he's doing now is finding a big box, taking out a bunch of stuff he can sell individually, and then selling the box that's left over of commons or maybe minor stars if you're looking at vintage stuff. But a lot of the stuff he's posting individually is still really, really reasonably priced. So, I grabbed a 52 Bowman, Jack Jensen. Man, I think this was only five bucks. Um, it's got nice stats. I, I'm just getting into vintage, just learning, so I really didn't know who this guy was. But it's funny, after I had said, oh, hey, I want that card, you know, and I had picked out a bunch of these other ones, too. I was looking through, I have a 52 reprint set, and I was reading through them, I was flipping through cards and, and kind of getting familiar with the set, which was actually really fun for me. And I was like, oh, this guy's pretty good. And then I was like, oh, hey, that's the card I bought. Awesome. <laughs> um, Gil Hodges. So he had two Gil Hodges for 10 bucks. That's pretty sweet. Um, including 59, which is the set that I really like the 59 and 61 set and the 62 is in really nice shape so that was pretty sweet easy pickup this is a Carl Erskine rookie card from 51 Bowman 51 Bowman this is not it's not like oh I need a Carl Erskine card but again real it, I think it was five bucks so real cheap um, and I just thought it would be neat to have a card from this set in my collection. And on that note, I'll, I will probably try and pick up like a, a fifth, what is it, 51 tops, red back, blue back. I, I'd like one of those cards just to have one, you know, just a, kind of a neat thing. Uh, Mini Minoso. I don't quite know why I grabbed this one, but I did. I don't didn't have any cards of him, I think. 
Okay, it's, it's getting good real fast. Now, it's a good thing I'm not real concerned with condition, because there is a Roberto Clemente second year card. And this one has a little story behind it. You can see how bad this condition is. Though It's got like, looks like somebody pressed a nickel into the card or something. It's also a big crease running right through the middle of the card, right through his eyes. But anyway, it's, it's a second year Clemente. I'm not going to be able to get a rookie probably in any condition. But he put this one up for 75 and I deliberated over it. I was like, oh man, I don't usually pay much for singles. That's kind of my limit. I think the most I've paid is 80 for the Nolan Ryan rookie, which was miscut. But I do love Clemente, and it didn't say sold right away. I kind of kept looking back throughout the day. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, man, I do want that card. It still hasn't sold. It sat there kind of all day, and I was like, hey, like I've been thinking about this card, and I noticed it hasn't sold. What? but I do really like it. Would you take 50 instead of 75? And maybe that was a way low ball offer. I don't really know. I'm still kind of learning. It seems low, but it's also trashed. So um, I was like, would you take 50? And he's like, oh, this sold right after I posted. I just forgot to mark it sold. So I was like, ah, oh, damn. Uh, but he's like, you know, I'll let you know if the guy backs out or whatever. And sure enough, like, Two or three days later, he goes, oh, that guy didn't end up buying that Clemente card if you want it. Um, he said, I'd, I'd give it to you for 60 So I suspect he could have sold it to, to the next guy for 75 I, I mean, he probably was doing me a solid there because he knew I tr had tried to claim it. But he did say he had several other messages about it, which I believe it's a second year Clemente. So that was sweet. And also, after I missed that one, he probably, I think maybe he was feeling bad that, oh man, he tried to buy that and it was already sold. And he goes, hey, but I'm about to post a Yaz rookie for 50 bucks. And, I, and, I was, and he had already posted it by the time I saw that message. And I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> Yaz rookie, 50 bucks. It too has, it looks, it looks nice straight on. It's got a crease, but it's, really hard to see it's a bad crease too it's only visible though if you if you're looking for it so it's got real nice eye appeal i think a 50 dollar yaz rookie um and then this i thought was phenomenal and this is partly partly about just a card being undervalued but he had these two up for i think 10 bucks wayne gretzky oh man i feel kind of sick Wayne Gretzky second year and it's two second years right second year and the second year all-star now they're in a little rough shape but they're not creased up or anything but I don't have I don't have a Gretzky rookie I do have a third year but I don't have a second year so I figured geez I gotta grab those and not only were they real cheap at 10 bucks but he was like I did find a few other hockey cards and I'm just gonna throw them in including a Gretzky a couple Espositos a couple Gila Fleurs couple Jim Craig rookies there's two in here so um, awesome man awesome uh, and then the other the last last but probably least Boomer Esiason rookie which is nice it actually I bought recently got the whole set of this but it was missing Jerry Rice I think it was just missing Jerry Rice and Boomer and I had a Jerry Rice extra and my Boomer in my base collection, or in my PC, was in really rough shape. So I think what I'm going to do is take this, put it in my PC, and shove the beat up one in with the set as like a placeholder. I might still try and pick up another nicer one. Um, but anyway, that I kind of needed that to complete my set. So all things told, um, this stack was 150 with a Yaz. Clemente, 52 Bowman, couple Hodges, 52 Tops, or 51 Bowman. Gretzky second year, Boomer. I mean, that, to me, that seemed pretty awesome. Um, 
so yeah, that oh, that's it, huh? That's that that's where I am. That was this was all my nice pickups. I'm super pumped to have a Clemente, a Yaz rookie. I didn't really have on my radar. I didn't really think I'd get something like that, but my vintage collection is really picking up. And then I I, I just barely touched on this, but when I was talking to Doug, um, who sold me some of the 61 Fleers, he had mentioned a group he's in, and I'm not going to plug it yet because, well, because I'm not part of the group, but it sounded really cool. The basic idea of it is it's, it's more about camaraderie than being a trading group, and it's like everybody posts their want lists and talks about what they collect, and you just hook each other up <laughs> so rather than like oh let's do a trade you just send people cards randomly and it's kind of a you know it's a, I think maybe a nice gesture to send something back but it's also more of a pay it forward type thing so uh, if you look back at my recent videos I've been posting I posted at least one video and I think I mentioned the idea a couple other times of of doing like these blind trades or getting mystery boxes you know finding people who it's like this is what I collect let's just send each other some cards and see what comes up see what we have and that sounds like what it is so I I'm kind of excited about trying to join that group um it's not like you just click join on a Facebook group type of thing you actually have to kind of get in get in with somebody in the group and get um, recommended and things like that but um, I just thought it was really cool and, and I think I can handle that and, and make a good impression or whatever and yeah I think it uh, and it seems sounds like there's a few guys in it who are local anyway who I have either already met or met and didn't know it type of thing at the card shows so there we have it uh, boy I wanted to say something else I don't know what I feel like just Jab, jabbering on um, I did I actually am really pumped about one other thing and it's with my 61 set um, I had uh, eyes on an eBay lot for the last week or so that was like a dozen cards something like that from 61 Fleer but it included a Babe Ruth that was clearly an upgrade to my uh, the one in my set now very seldom do I actually buy stuff on eBay and I've I almost never win if it's an auction because I don't have like sniping software or whatever so I just always get sniped but I put in a bid and I was the only bid for several days and then I got outbid by but not by that much so it, the lot was the lot was good it had a nice condition Babe Ruth and a Ty Cobb which is, uh, mine is in crappy shape and two or three cards I needed and a couple other stars I was, it was a nice nice lot I thought mostly in pretty good shape so I actually set a an alarm on my phone for like five minutes before the auction was ending and I had the auction was at 51 bucks or something when I logged in and it was just a few minutes to go and I was thinking man I'd probably put s I had in my head I would bid 75 and I expected it to go probably well over a hundred I think the babe is probably 100. I'm telling this whole story uh, prematurely, but whatever. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I actually really kind of want these. Maybe I should do 82. A little trick there, because if you do, it's like it's kind of like you don't want to bid 99 bucks because somebody else might bid 100. So it's like you want to get something for under a hundred so you go oh, I'll say 99 but the other guy is smarter than you and it's like somebody's gonna say 99 so I'll say a hundred somebody's even smarter than that and goes somebody's gonna bid a hundred so I'll go 101 so I was kind of using that theory and my 75 turned into an $82 bid so with like five seconds to go without any sniping software I put in 82 bucks expecting to not win and I won it and not only that, but it only went up a few bucks. I, I think it went from 51 to 55 or something, 56. Um, so, awesome. I, I think the Babe Ruth is worth more than that alone, uh, probably easily. So I now will have an upgraded Babe Ruth on the way and several other nice upsets. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
upgrades on my set and I'll be able to probably dump my the ones that I'm replacing and get back my the money I spent on them I'm, I'm assuming probably pretty easily with a Babe Ruth in there so anyway uh, yeah I'm excited about that one too uh, uh, yeah 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 I spent a lot of time tonight going through and trying to organize my want list better. I'm not really a set builder, but I'm trying to figure out which sets I want to collect. And I'm just I'm just getting super pumped about the whole vintage thing. And I love this I love this idea of being able to get cards in rough shape and add these spectacular cards to my collection at affordable prices because they've got the character that a 51 or 56 card should have really um, it's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool thing to me uh, it's a really cool thing when I get into the newer cards I, I'm I'm not a stickler for condition but yeah I don't want creases on my cards from the 80s but from the 50s I'll take a crease and a huge you know and a huge uh, bargain <laughs> discount on the card so uh, a lot of the rookie cards I thought I'd never have might be a little more a little more affordable than I thought if I go with that idea so anyway yeah there's my uh, rambling showing off oops showing off video for the night nothing really else coming except that ebay lot i've got i've got john's got one thing saved for me and i'm kind of hoping he posts up something else i want to buy today or tomorrow because i'll probably be over there sunday to pick it up and i was looking to oh i oh i missed a big part of my story that's pretty key here when i went over to vancouver i told you i dropped my daughter off with grandma and grandpa grandpa is in rough shape my father-in-law i'm sure i've mentioned that and I think part in I think he's feeling like he wants to connect with people you know and, and really like enjoy what what life he's got left he's probably not got a ton more time because of all the health issues he's having kind of all at once piled on him and I'm not saying he's gonna die tomorrow or in a month but, but who knows what what's next and I think he's really realizing that you know life is short and he, and he doesn't really know what's at next so I've seen him trying to connect with me and he's taken a real interest in the cards that I'm doing so I brought over all my uh, cards that I've been picking up and was showing him. I sh showed him the 61 Fleer set and these uh, and the box I've got started of my vintage baseball and he you know he was I know he's sort of feigning interest, but I know he's also interested, and I think it just gives him something to, to talk about and, and connect with me on, which is which is really cool. Um, he did collect as a kid, but not a ton. He was like, I probably had a shoebox full of baseball cards. Um, but, you know, so he recognized, of course, some of the names, and I'm sure some of the cards and card designs and stuff. So it was just, it was just really neat. Um, and it has me more more excited to pick up more stuff and, and talk to him and show him too. So that was a really cool, you know, there's a big thing about collecting and uh, the camaraderie that can go with it. And, and I mentioned that, you know, Mark has been giving me awesome deals and has just been really supportive. When I, when I found out I had cancer, he was super, super over the top good to me, I think. Um, and it just, it was very touching um, and now I've had several deals with John and I feel like we've got you know a, a, a little bit of a rapport going on and that's cool and like I said I had a good talk with Doug and uh, he told me about that group that I'm gonna try and get in and, and I already have picked out some cards for him um, from his list and just there's a camaraderie thing that a lot of times I don't I haven't really focused on as much I guess and it's cool to see that part of it um, and it's one of the things I'm excited about because I do enjoy there's a guy uh, named Rob that I have been talking with 
off and on for a long time initially as uh, both as MMA fans and I think he saw my artwork and so would talk about that and recently in the last few months it's like he'll show me when he picks up cool cards so I started showing him when I picked up cool cards and he'd watch some of my videos um, and so it's the same thing there it's like when I get new cards it's, it's pretty exciting pretty exciting to show them to somebody uh, and you know and talk about it so that's why I'm doing this too right like I don't know that that many people really care to watch other people watch look at their cards but I know I enjoy it I'm watching other people do this so I, I gotta imagine some people are enjoying my videos um, even though they're my cards and uh, I don't know anyway all right half hour uh, 15 minutes too long <laughs> I'll catch you guys later it's 2 a.m. holy smokes got my last t-ball game tomorrow and uh, yeah should be a great weekend uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out I'll try and upload this before then so it's still relevant see you guys